you are registered for it or you are trying to show up to figure out whether you want to register for it, either which day, uh, that's the topic. Can people hear me far enough? This is supposed to be a seminar course. That means they should all be sitting in some kind of <coughs> way. But we are as far away from each other as possible. And the mind is not working. So, uh, um, OK, so let me start. You're fine, Sridhar? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So let me start by asking, what's your reason for signing up for this course? OK, so it's a poll. Uh, so raise your hands. Has the word AI in it? Mm -hmm. How many of you have taken because it has the word AI in it? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Ten because it has the AI in it. Can we vote multiple times or just one? You can vote multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It has the word human in it. There's a whole bunch of people. My assumption is the next reason might be done. All other courses are full. <laughs> right. It's a seminar course, and it's supposed to be actually about 14 15 students, and we are full to the gills by seminars course standards. We are trying to actually make it smaller. Um, but how many of you? I probably should not have ever asked you why you did that. But presumably the 20 people who didn't even bother raising their hands in the first two to get because this has seats. If so, uh, let me say that you might want to rethink it. Um, you know, hopefully as we go on, um, that would be a pretty sad reason to get to this course um, because it would be somewhat hard for you um, to uh, get the enthusiasm. Okay. Um, so I did send. How many of you have seen the syllabus? Okay. Uh, the people who didn't see the syllabus, presumably you are not registered, and so you have never got my mails. I kept sending whoever got registered, even at the last minute, I kept sending them just to make sure that they have a sense of what to do it. I'll do some of it today, but you know, essentially, um, this is what the syllabus uh, said as the. Uh, be available on the registration page, right? I mean, you should see this. Um, so this seminar will focus on these challenges in designing human aware AI systems. We kind of figure out what they are with more today. Um, and then so an underlying theme of this class would be uh, presumably that uh, human aware AI is somehow even bigger than AI. Okay, and that it sort of actually adds more challenges um, from a variety of aspects and we try to get you to understand those. Okay. Um, by the way, this is a seminar class, and this is the first class. In fact, this is the only class I will be standing and lecturing. Okay, this is another thing that you want to understand. From now onwards, from the rest time onwards, especially, people will be presenting the papers that they read and will now be discussing. So, in fact, the very next point I will be making is that if you are looking for a pre designed course with essentially lectures and so on, I do teach them, but they are being taught right now, not this semester. This semester, I'm not teaching. Uh, design course is what I'm doing. Uh, if you're looking for like an intro to AI course, there are two intro to AI courses. I assume they're full, but you have to try to answer uh, those. Okay. Uh, so the prerequisites for this, as I was saying, is that we, I sort of have to assume that you have knowledge about AI. This is a seminar course on human aware AI. If you don't know, I'm also hoping that you know the you have some knowledge about humans. Um, you know, I can see that you're all human. Um, start up at least look like them. Um, and uh, hopefully, you are, and that definitely I'm assuming you have, and I, um, you need to have a knowledge of you know, AI at the introductory level. If you don't, this is not going to be a fun class for you, because everybody else will understand and you know, discussing uh, at a certain level. We'll be reading essentially state of art papers in this area. So if you don't have any idea what AI is, um, either you should have a lot of interest in you know, basically spending time and reading things up. Um, I, I'm not one to, I'm not one to discourage intellectual struggle. If you have the intellectual struggle and you can say, oh, what the heck, I can figure it out myself, be my guest. But then, you know, if you're not right, your grades may not agree. Okay, so that's basically. Um, 
right? Uh, so I'm assuming uh, you like to remember the AI in the background. And then this topic is really a vertical um, in the sense that it has connections to all areas of AI. Every possible thing that you know about AI, in fact, you get the intelligent agent uh, diagram that people talk about in the introduction to AI classes. Uh, Every one of those areas winds up being affected. It will have additional challenges in terms of actually the system has to work with humans in the loop. It has to collaborate, it has to get along, it has to team, it has to make sense and all these things, and all of which put additional challenges for each one of those uh, areas of AI. Okay. So I won't even actually list all the areas of AI that I assume would have known from some people at AI level. On top of it, you also have connections to human-computer interaction and human factors uh, literatures because essentially they say that uh, the introspection is the worst form of psychology because everybody thinks that we are human, we can sort of think about how humans behave and then we just design systems. And you know that computer science in general and engineering in general too is you know full of situations where people design systems that weren't meant for people. Okay, that were meant for engineers who are not who are kind of borderline people. <laughs> and and so they never really work well. You have someone saying so that was that quote, I don't know how many of you have seen the first quote from Kurt Van Eger Junior. Uh, that it's the people that seem to kind of crank up the machinery. Otherwise you would have lovely engineering artifacts. People are a pain in you know whatever. And uh, so the question of course is we could get rid of them. And as we'll see in a minute, actually AI systems did find a way of getting rid of them. They are extremely good. They are like the most popular systems on Mars, it turns out. <laughs> there are no humans on Mars. There are two AI systems running around. Maybe two, maybe more. You know, the Spirit and Rover and all this, the Spirit and Opportunity are running around. They are extremely good there. It's the people that we don't seem to be you know, getting around that way. And so we do need to kind of look at areas to some extent um, that have looked at these issues, human-computer interaction, which is like a big area, and of course, the human factors, um, and then of course, the mother field of many of these, which is psychology, human psychology. And uh, we will sort of see some connections to them today itself, but so because of which, the papers that you'll wind up reading, it, it may well be highly skeptical about how to provide a very specific capability that you think you, you know, will be required because you are interacting with humans. Okay, in which case we are taking the paper. Or what do humans actually want? For example, you know, one big thing that we're talking about today is if a system supposedly is interacting with humans, then they expect explanations from systems because they expect explanations for people, other people that they are working with. Okay. And so the question is what is an explanation? And what sort of explanation seems to seem to work? And as a computer science and AI guy, if you can somebody can tell you what sort of explanations should be produced, you might write an algorithm. But you know, what is the right explanation? What sort of explanation should be produced? We can't just sort of play this game of let's just put on the hat of I'm a human, like what kind of explanation do I like? So that's what I'll make. Okay. So there is that particular connection, human computer interaction, psychology, and then somewhat loosely, but in fact we will mention some of that today too, is uh, uh, there are connections to ethics and philosophy. So, for example, if systems wind up interacting with humans, as we'll see in a minute, uh, they will have to model what the humans believe. And uh, if you can have a sense of what they believe in, you can also manipulate those beliefs. If you manipulate those beliefs, then you can make humans do things that you, the AI system, wants them to do. This is the kind of thing that Elon Musk should be worried about. Okay, uh, but he's more worried about super AI coming in with this box blazing and killing people. But really, it's so much, you know, much more sophisticated way we get, you know, get on each other's nerves. It's not with guns. To some extent, I actually find that, you know, using a gun is saying I don't have a brain. Okay, uh, if you have a brain, you should actually use it to essentially get even with what you want without using a gun. Okay. And we do that. We do that in terms of actually manipulating people's belief systems, people's mental models of what it is that we are trying to do to them. And so, in a way, actually, that is the kind of thing uh, that will then get you to, if the systems start doing that, 
where do you draw the line? What are the ethical guidelines in terms of this is, you know, interactive? Now, obviously, thankfully, this is a research area. We are nowhere near close to systems completely working with humans as if they are humans themselves. Um, although, having said that, I should also mention that we anthropomorphize the heck of everything. Right? And so, while on one hand I say mostly you don't need to worry about ethical problems because no AI systems are really good enough to actually emulate humans in their interaction with other humans, it is also the case that we consider everything to be human. I mean, you've seen all these great YouTube videos of the old psychology experiments that you can show it to the kids where these sticks kind of running around and you kind of attribute beliefs, desires, intentions to these things. Many, many years back, you mentioned this earlier on, many, many years back, uh, there was a system that, what's the history's first chatbot? What's the history's first chatbot? Eliza. Yeah, so, yeah. Anybody else knows what Eliza is? Okay, Eliza is this uh, Rosalian psychologist, essentially, which would, uh, Joe Weizenbaum wrote this little chatbot. Okay, at the dawn of AI almost, it's like 1950, late 1950s. And all it was doing essentially is it would read what you said, turn it around and ask you some, what you might think are simplistic questions. Okay, and so it was trying to kind of act like a Rogerian or a Freudian psychologist. And it was like, he did it on a lot. He did it basically to show that, look, it can be done. And then eventually, he found that people in his office, he was a psychologist working with Marvin Minsky in, uh, at MIT I lab. And he found that people in his office, uh, the secretaries and other people, you know, first they started playing with this as a bit just a I mean, first of all, remember the whole word chatbot didn't exist at that time. This is the first thing. Okay. So they would type to this. And then after a while, they actually forgot that this is a dumb program. First of all, you know, it's not necessary that some administrative secretarial staff would know what actually is involved in writing this program. So the thing that happened is that these secretaries were pouring their hearts out to this system. Now, if Joe Weizenbaum had any sense, he should have recorded all this stuff and blackmailed it. <laughs> right? It's like the way to make good money. But, you know, he is some kind of an old fuddy daddy and he decided to cut the project short. He actually stopped the project because he said it's crossing an ethical line that I did myself see coming. This was late 50s. Now, obviously, we are wiser. We know that we should make money if we can make money. <laughs> so, so there is Andrew M is involved in uh, this company called uh, Wobot. You know, you tell it all your woes, right? And who has woes? College students are perpetually lying about my exam, depressed, not going well. And, and, and essentially, there is no real support system for you. So instead of actually getting human psychologists, which apparently they still want salaries, uh, we have come up with this idea. This company essentially is, I mean, to some extent I'm caricaturing, but this is Bobart is the new age Eliza. It's actually being field tested on certain West Coast universities. So you're happy that you're not one of those people. <laughs> okay. But the point is, what has really changed? Do we really think that chatbots have come long enough way that there is some sort of an understanding about what they are doing so that they can actually play the role of a therapist to humans? Of course, you can also ask, should many, many human psychologists and psychiatrists be allowed to practice? They seem to be bozos. And why should I be wasting my money going and talking to them? Okay. But at least there are some guidelines and there's a diversity in psychiatrists. Obot is one Obot. And that's one software. It supposedly tries to kind of, you know, uh, customize to your OS and start issuing advice. 
Eliza to Robert, we have come a long way. Okay. Um, the interesting thing to keep in mind is what sort of ethical, ethical guidelines should we be worried about when you have systems essentially acting like they are humans. And the junior doesn't can't tell the difference. Okay. In some cases, it's actually a good thing because we have evolved to interact with humans. So that's why we anthropomorphize everything. That's why cartoon industry exists. You know, animated uh, movies exist because of that. Okay. But at the same time, there is also certain areas where you have to worry about is it ethical. Yeah. And so we will talk a little about this at some point of time. Okay. But you know, but it's what I realized is that once you have the ability to model the mental state of humans in the loop and reason with it, you can use it for good or bad. And you don't depend on companies' good intentions. We just found out that it is Facebook as a popular data problem. I don't know I mean, how anybody in computer science thought otherwise, but apparently it was like a huge uh, news article. Right. Anyway, so those are all the things that are kind of say. Obviously, I spent more time talking about this and this. That's because I assume you know AI. I'm not going to teach AI here. I assume that most computer science students may have may not have thought about these other things, and if they thought about them at all, they thought it's like this fuzzy stuff, you know, in smart CBS engineering. Um, and so we do have to worry about it. Okay, so that's the period with this. And so definitely introduction to the AI level background. And if you don't have it, please come and talk to me and try to talk to me and try to tell me why you think you can find it. Okay, because we are not necessarily we just don't assume that you have some kind of introduction to AI background. Of course I assume you have my introduction to AI background. Uh, but that's what any other interactive data is. Also, stop me anyway if you have questions. Yeah. Um, so this is what I said uh, to start out basically tell people um, that it's most useful for PhD students interested in the topic, but may also be relevant for a few research-oriented masters or adventurous PhD students with info data. That's what I said. Okay. I am fine with making exceptions. But when I make exceptions, you take the responsibility. Okay. Not that if you have input AI, you are guaranteed an A plus or any such thing. You know, it's just that that's the minimum that you're supposed to have. Okay. Uh, and again, please, if you consider taking this course because there are more <laughs> courses open, uh, you don't need to tell me that. You know, I know that it's kind of become awkward. You know, you must practice and all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I mean, you know, going on a date saying this other date was not possible. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I won't take it personally, but, you know, it will be good for you, necessarily. So you may want to make sure that you take uh, something else. You know, there are lots and lots of things uh, that might be more useful for you uh, than, uh, than just basically doing the course for that kind of thing. This course for that kind of thing. Because, as the next slide shows, the course format is you read papers and we discuss them. Yeah. And, and to some extent, for that to happen, people should have similar backgrounds, at least. At, at, at a minimum background, not similar background. Actually, I want diversity of backgrounds. I'm completely fine with people coming from very different areas, um, like you know, psychology, for example. If somebody is sitting here in psychology, they say, I know all about psychology. Why can't you let me you know, hang around? Because I'll pick up whatever I needed about AI. I, I would be fine with that. So I like the diversity of ideas part. But you need to have some minimum background, otherwise it's not just going to work. Okay. Uh, so the students will need a signed paper, submit them. The way we are going to try to do this is these are kinds of things that seminar courses normally it's very hard to grade. There are no exams, there are no pop quizzes, but there may be pop quizzes, even though I said there are no pop quizzes. That's the interesting part about pop quizzes. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> it's like the unexpected hanging. How many of you know the unexpected hanging person? Look at Anyway. <laughs> now, so the thing is that we will be putting, trying to put some structure to essentially an unstructured class because it's essentially unstructured. Okay. And so one of the structures is that we'll give the papers to read for each week, each week, and there would be certain designated students who will actually present the papers uh, for a short amount of time, and then we will all discuss. You know, um, and I will suggest some questions that you can pick up. 
and uh, there are other questions that might come up from the floor or uh, whatever the round table um, and then we will discuss them and but to make sure that you didn't show up without reading the paper we will be requiring everybody to post their reflections on the paper um, before the class actually i think it will be in the night before the class okay i will i will make it you know, specific but let me be you know before the class night before the class so that you can actually check the people are done um, and uh, and then so then the class time will be spent on discussing the papers let either by me in the, some cases i will talk about the paper and then we will discuss uh, some of the students in fact you know, i'm hoping that the number of students will be manageable and at a certain level of uh, background uh, that we can actually you know have everybody present and do that. Um, i am acutely sensitive sensitive to the fact that uh, blind leading blind doesn't help I'm not a big fan, actually, of seminar courses uh, for people without that, because then they're essentially just sharing their complete cluelessness with the rest of the class, who will keep their polite silence, because you should never ask somebody when you know, a student is present, you should never ask questions, because then they will ask you questions. How will we get good grades? But honestly, that's the wrong thing to look at. And in fact, we really will have, hopefully, and I'll consider the class a success if we have weekly discussions. Okay, with people hopefully not getting uh, injured, but, you know, uh, Okay, and then the class time, we will use the paper, that's why you're the instructor, rather than the students. And then you will also probably, during the class, get on to additional topics related to the paper, because we are reading papers, not textbooks, and so they will be and then the students also uh, would be required to do a semester project related to the course. We'll talk more about this, but it's not a course project I'm going to give. It's a project that you will develop, you know, and I will allow teams, and I'm trying to look at ways in which, to some extent, I really assume that I'll know this class next week. Because without this churn, you know, a bunch of people show up, a bunch of people leave. By next week, you will, you know, we know exactly who is in the class. And at that time, I can make you know, you know, more clear plans as to how to run the class. Um, but certainly, we will be uh, required. We will be required to do uh, projects. And one more thing is, I'm not a big fan. Just I'm like, I already said, I'm not a big fan of seminar courses where students who are too less teach other students who are equally too less. So I hope that we'll all be good. Okay. At the same time, I'm also not a, I'm also not a big fan of team projects where somebody carries the other way and the rest of the people come along for the right. Um, you know. uh, but we will try, you know, depending on the size of the class, I will try to structure the teams uh, to some extent, we, you know, that there would be a way of figuring out that everybody is actually doing something uh, important. Okay. We'll talk about ideas a little bit, but ultimately, as the minister goes on, you know, as you read some of the papers, you will come up with things that you might want to work okay. And then uh, we will have Piazza, which I will show in a minute, uh, where you can put up your idea and people can join the teams and all that stuff. And then at some point of time, we will have a proposal and then after that, we will have a project. Yes, sir. So, uh, would you, uh, like for the project, would it be like kind of an implementation of the paper or building upon a research paper that we need or something? Either of them are fine. Um, basically, you could do. Um, I mean, again, there is. It's not a project I'm giving, so okay. I would be looking at what your proposal is. Okay, uh, and then uh, if it's an interesting implementation, um, that takes some interesting idea further. Um, that's great. Okay, I also realize that you know, ideally. My hope is that there will be about 18 or 19 papers with me as the last chapter mm. at the end of the semester. So then I have my time gaps there. Okay. But that's kind of too much, you know. It's like not giving you grades because you didn't get the I have these papers probably could be used against me in the day. So what I would do is I will take into account the fact that it's a class project. But you know, we will have to look at the idea that we have. So both are possible. It depends on people. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, um, so that's about the projects, and then the teams will be allowed. And uh, I'm hoping 
that we won't have more than about a dozen teams, uh, but we'll see. Okay, a dozen is getting there. I'll wait for a few more times. Reading, paper reading, I have to put some numbers. So, the <coughs> number of paper reading yet for the structured reflection of the courses of the students is about 50% class participation. This should hopefully be the last class where we go each day at the front of the group. Um, because if I hope that we will actually stop. stop. Even this class, we should stop the discussion. Uh, the discussion will matter, um, and paper presentation will matter, and participating in a discussion, either in class or on piazza, which is something that we will show would be helpful. And please understand that we are all intelligent. Okay? So faking comments is not going to hurt the help your kids. You know, I mean it's just basically you have to write comments that are thoughtful as again as, you know, let me give five comments because that's my quota for this semester. You know, that's not going to work. Okay. Uh, no need convince me that you really that's the maximum you know. At least if you keep quiet and not say anything, there's a mystery. This person is Einstein, just didn't have the time to type. But if you write random comments, you know, just count, then I'll know that you're one. Okay. Um, so I can project proposal about 50 percent, final project is <coughs> Any questions on this stuff? And as I said, you know, it's a great subject. With notes. Not with other That's a piazza. How many of you have gone and uh, uh, logged into Piazza. Okay. Those of you who haven't logged in, if you have registered before and still didn't log in, that's the kind of indifference that we hope won't happen. Um, essentially, but I mean, it is not too much there yet, but I'd like people to be able to use that. Um, and we will have, uh, I mean, so this is kind of the schedule approximately, so in fact, the sites that I'm using today are linked from there in the media. So, you know, um, and then, so there are 15 classes. I may actually be, if I'm definitely be out on 11th class, uh, that's 1036. I will be possibly out of town, also that class before that. Um, what I'm hoping to do uh, is, depending on the size of the class, depending on people's availability, I will try to just shift the class to a different day for those weeks, you know, if you know, people are available. If not, you know, in fact, I have one uh, Tathagata who is a uh, student, you know, just about to complete his PhD, uh, graduating end of the semester. Uh, he will essentially be here at the end of Okay, so that's basically all. Any questions? Okay. Okay, so these are the topics that I actually have on the on the um, syllabus and. Um, much of what I'm going to do today is um, for a bunch of time right now, I will try to kind of motivate the topic as to why it was one of the I kind of more interesting now versus why I was most interested in this particular before. Um, and then uh, at some part of time, I will almost go through each of these like at a one slide level to give you an idea of what is involved in that, just a one slide level. I understand that's like a highly, very shallow, predatory interaction. Um, but that will basically kind of give you, I didn't quite know, other than saying, let's read this paper uh, together right now in the first class, you know, there's no other thing. So that's approximately what I'm going to do. So you don't have to kind of make sense of it right away, but these are the topics I hope that people who look at the syllabus look at this and thought something in that makes sense to them, that's why they showed up, okay? Um, otherwise, it doesn't have to be the case that every one of the topics should be interesting to you, but you know, if some of the topics are interesting to you, you can, for example, be leading the discussion is there. Nothing is interesting, it's going to be based on your time as well. Okay. Um, so the papers, actually, this is just a list I'm flashing right now to say that we started putting some papers together. You don't need to worry about this right now until I actually put it up on the piazza um, in the schedule list as to what are the papers for the list of this. Okay. Um, but you will see that them, most of them are technical papers. Some new, for example, let's see, there's a um, There are papers that are essentially from psychology um, and um, you know, mostly from the yeah, Okay. 
But this is not even the complete case, and it's not that we'll read all of these papers. It's just to give you a sense of the fact that you know, there are papers that you can read. Um, question? Okay. Yes. Uh, I saw that there is a link for these slides. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I will change the slide. We will have a break. Apparently, we have until 3 o'clock. So, at 1 30, around 1 30, we will take it again. Okay. So, if are there questions on the administrative stuff that we talked about now? I mean, from here onwards, it's like the sort of a practical interior interaction to the office. Um, so, if you have questions about uh, your grade and what are you supposed to do, etc., this is the Can we get a I don't have a specific number in mind. Uh, you can make an argument that it's, you know, if it has uh, you know, enough important pieces and everybody can, I mean, I assume that it better not be like a particular project because it requires another team to just manage it. Um, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I haven't necessarily said, I mean, I think team basically means two are allowed. Okay, I mean, so you have one person team sort of an asking around. Um, but uh, beyond that, I don't have any fixed limits. Okay. Yes? How many papers would you expect to be reading? How many papers would you? Uh, okay, so that's a very interesting question. <laughs> um, I will, if it's a conf I mean, probably at least two papers per week. Okay. Um, but that's a minimum. In some cases, you know, so they're like, we will read two different kinds of papers, the conference papers which are dense, but are about six, eight pages long. Um, and journal papers, which are long, but they're actually easier to read. Uh, and then, of course, there's also, if you read a psychology paper, it will be ultra long, but it's also much more easy to read. So you have to learn to read them. You know, it depends on what you normally do. I mean, if you, if you are one of those people who skip over the formulas and focus on the text, and you know, are the other kind of person who skip over the text and focus on the formulas, you know, there will be some papers which you will write in some moments. But two at least. I think that's you know, really good. Um, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So you said two papers. So the entire class will be discussing about those two papers. Yeah. Or you have a bunch of them distributed among students and you get to the papers. No, I mean, basically the whole point of seminar is that there is exchange of ideas on something that we all read together, right? Um, I think it's actually the, the best idea for me in terms of having a good semester is, you know, each class I give maybe about, you know, uh, 20 papers, and then there will be wall-to-wall -wall presentations. Uh, you know, it's like, there are, there's this idea called write-only papers that people write, 